all, and welcome to Law One Gaming with another episode of Stellaris Combat Theory. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Battleship Spinal Mounts and see which is the right one for you. But before we start, roll the intro! Hello all, Law One Gaming here to remind you of my 30 days of giveaway. That's right, for 30 days I'm giving out Steam gift cards. To qualify for a chance to get one, all you gotta do is like, comment, and subscribe. For more details, check out my announcement video in the description below. And without further ado, on with the show. Bear with me today, folks, because we've got a lot of math involved. But before we even dive into the math, we need to ask ourselves a philosophical question. What makes something the best? Well, since we're testing weapons, the most sensible definition seems to be the weapon that can kill the quickest against the most possible targets. As such, we want an ideal weapon with high damage, high accuracy, high rate of fire, and possibly other benefits. So to find this out, we're going to test spinal mounts against each other and against various other targets. But before we test, we need to do the math. Oh yeah! First. A quick comparison of the stats. At a glance, we can see the Tachyon Lance has the highest damage. Middling other stats is weak to shields and slices through armor, so we can expect it to do well against force and the like. Next, the Giga Cannon, which has some of the best stats overall, can ignore half armor, and does significant bonus damage to shields. As such, we can expect this to be a good all-rounder weapon, probably second place overall. Lastly, the Arc Emitter, which seems to have the worst damage, middling other stats, but has amazing accuracy and amazing modifiers, able to ignore shields and armor. In which case, we could probably expect this one to be decent against most ships, great against corvettes, but probably nothing special overall. It's at this point we get to do a bunch of math. First, we need to figure out how long it takes one of our weapons to kill a target's shield. For this, I made a formula. This formula accounts for each type of target's average shield defenses, shield regeneration, and the target's evasion. If you want the exact formula, you can go ahead and pause the video now, check it out. But I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of you trust me to have made sure my math works. And I'll assure you it does. From here, we can see that Tachyon Lances, on their own, simply cannot kill shields, and Giga Cannons likewise fail against battleships and corvettes, but kill shields of cruisers and destroyers, albeit with some struggle. Okay, so that sort of biases our calculations in favor of Archimeters, since they don't have to kill shields. So let's go ahead on to hull damage, and assume that there are no shields, which we'll just imagine we have support weapons that take care of the shields for us. So. How long does it take to kill the hull? Again, I made my formula, accounting for armor, evasion, average damage, and so on, and you can check it if you want. And from here, we get more or less the results we expect. Tachyons are very deadly, except against corvettes. Giga cannons are middlings. And arc emitters are best against corvettes, but pretty much last when you compare it to any other target. But then, if we combine the two charts, looking at total time, we see that, well, because of the shields, our committers are on top. Okay, that will go ahead and do it for our math for now, so let's go ahead and start doing some testing. We'll begin with some one-on-one -on -one tests, just to see if our calculated numbers come out right, and lo and behold, they do. In one-on-one, -on -one, Tachyon and Giga Cannons cannot bust down shields, while an Arc Emitter can just pierce everything and chip away at its targets. And if we increase this to a large scale, say 10 on 10 or 20 on 20, we see pretty much the same results. The Arc Emitters are able to win because they can ignore shields and armor, whereas Tachyons and Gigas get caught up on dealing extra damage to the shield. As such, our tests support our calculations. In the one-on-one, -on -one, with just spinal weapons, our committers win. Fortunately, no battleship goes into battle with just the spinal weapon. We can build Tachyon and Giga ships with additional weapons like phase disruptors to help destroy enemy shield. So let's do just that. For the Tachyon, the biggest problem is the enemy shield, so we'll want to support it with phase disruptors and some extra plasma casters. For Giga Cannons, we want to do the same with dealing damage to the shield, but let's just focus on raw damage, so we'll go with missiles to help with high evasion targets as well. And for our Arc Emitters, 
We'll support it with bombers, which also ignore shields, some flak defense, and auto cannons for those smaller targets. From these tests, we can see several things, most prominent of which is that the R Commander comes out on top. This is simply from being able to ignore shields and armor, which goes further than the high damage offered by the other weapons. I'll also admit for these tests that using missiles for the Giga Cannon was probably a bad choice, especially since I put flak cannons on the R Commander ships, but I'll admit, I don't really know what to do to help the Giga Cannon ships, so if you've got a better model, send it to me and I'll go ahead and retest. Otherwise, it seems like Archimeters come out on top due to their ability to go through shields and armor with complete ease. Lastly, let's take a look at our ships against other targets, such as Corvettes. Put simply, I'm going to trust my math on this one, and you're going to want to go with the Archimeters, especially as the target's evasion goes up. You see, both Tachyon and Giga Cannons don't stand a chance at hitting small Corvettes, whereas the super accurate Archimeter will be able to. So in that situation, you wouldn't even want to bother with Tachyon or Giga, you'd want to use something else. This probably doesn't come as too surprising if you've been watching the episode up to this point, but I felt like saying it just to be clear. Conclusion number one. Our committers win. Their ability to ignore shield and armor more than compensates for their drawback of low damage, and their super accuracy heavily favors them against small targets as well. As such, big or small, our committers will kill them all. Conclusion number two. Tachyon lances have a place if you're going against an enemy that is using super armor but little to no shields. Is this a likely target? Eh, no. Is it possible? Yeah. In which case, use a Tachyon Lance. It will outperform the Archimeter, but only in this very limited case. Conclusion number three. Both Tachyon Lances and Giga Cannons require you to build battleships around those weapons. And as we saw with Tachyon Lances, it's viable to use phase disruptors. However, Archimeters allow you to be flexible with your other armaments against various targets. As such, my recommended build is going to be the one presented here. The Archimeter with the bombers and the autocannons. You can adjust accordingly to fit your play style, but I think this is an all-arounder that will suit most people. And with that, we're done for today's episode. As always, if you feel like I overlooked something with this topic, or you want me to look into another topic, please let me know in the comments below. On top of that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for my 30 days of giveaways. Other than that, I'm done for today, so I'll see you next time, Space Cowboys.